Hello everybody and we are in beautiful Biloxi, Mississippi to take you on a tour of Beauvoir, Jefferson Davis's last home, the site of his presidential library, and also where he would go on to write the rise and fall of the Confederacy. Beauvoir was bequeathed to him by Sarah Dorsey, who was an author in her own right. She was a widower who would in 1875 invite Jefferson Davis to live in a cottage on the property to write his memoirs. He would go on to live there the rest of his life because in 1878, ill with cancer, Sarah would bequeath the entire estate to Jefferson Davis. In 1902, it was sold to the United Daughters of the Confederacy where it was used as a veterans hospital until 1953 when its last occupant passed away. On the National Historic Landmarks, it is now a museum and is a peek back into the past, an understanding of the past, and in the hopes of better understanding our future.
Highway 90 wasn't there, the oak trees hung over the Gulf of Mexico. Now James Brown, he brings down some of his workers and he hires craftsmen from New Orleans and Biloxi to help him build his Louisiana style cottage. Now we're a one story home that's elevated for two purposes. One, James Brown had really considered was for surge water. We've had 30 hurricanes come through here. Not one of them ever crossed our threshold until Katrina, but she was a rule breaker. She comes right in and dumps 18 inches of water inside the house. And this little cottage. This was their schoolhouse, but it's also where Jefferson Davis lives for two years before he purchases both walk. Now you can go inside there. They've got a 25 minute movie that runs in there. It's set up as Jefferson's library and study where he wrote his memoirs, The Rise and Fall of Confederate Government. Now after Katrina, we wanted to reset the house and have it look like it did when Jefferson Davis owned it. So we went back and we did that photo oh, and we were really proud of the results, but that rebel Confederate paint just keeps on bleeding on out. And you know what? That's okay because it's a sweet reminder that we were the Confederate Veterans Home, which is a significant part of our history from 1903 to 1957. Now, James Brown is very elaborate in his construction. Back in the day, we were taxed by how many doors and how many closets you have in your home. That's why when you go in older homes, they have armoires, because they didn't want to pay a closet tax. So ironically, when he passes away, his widow can't pay the taxes, and she loses the house. She's been up to the Hurricane Plantation in Vicksburg. That was Jefferson Davis's family plantation. She knows his oldest brother, Joseph. <laughs> She's even gone to school with his second wife, Farina. So when she hears Jefferson Davis is in Biloxi, woo, she gets excited. Now this was after the Civil War, after he spent two years in prison. He's been to Canada, Europe, back to the United States. Woo, it's been a difficult time. He's gone through bankruptcy. Um, he's tried to sell insurance unsuccessfully. He's making a little bit of money by doing speeches. You know how those presidents are when they leave office. But it's been a struggle. He's come down here to Biloxi to purchase a little piece of property, build him a little house, just kind of get away from the world and write his memoirs. Well, Miss Dorsey invites him to come check out her little cottage. She says, you know, this would be perfect for you to write your memoirs. She said, I'll give it to you free room and board. Anything you need, you just need to let me know. Remember, I'm a published author. I can even do your dictation. Anything you need. Jefferson Davis has to agree this is a pretty sweet setup. But he tells Miss Dorsey he can't accept charity, and he insists on paying her $50 a month. Now, he brings down his oldest son, Jefferson Jr., but you know how kids are. When he turns 21, he goes up to Memphis, where he contracts yellow fever and passes away. Now, this is the last of his four boys to die, leaving his oldest daughter, Margaret, and the baby girl of the family. She's named after her mother, Verena Ann, but we all call her Winnie. She was born during the Civil War. She is the sweetheart of the Confederacy. Now, um, Miss Dorsey, she comes up to Jefferson Davis and she says, you know, I know you love Beauvoir as much as I do. I'd like to see you purchase it because I know you'll take good care of it. Woo-wee, he says, Miss Dorsey, oh, I do love Beauvoir, but I gotta be honest with you, I just don't have the money. I just paid for Miss Margaret's wedding. I just bought her a bunch of wedding furniture. Dorsey says, tell you what, I'm going to sell you the 608 acres, the house of Beauvoir, all the outside buildings for $5,500 and you can make me payments. <laughs> oh, ho. Jefferson Davis is no fool. Of course he purchases Beauvoir, but Miss Dorsey's up to a wee bit of mischief now. She knows she has terminal breast cancer. She knows she's dying. She's already written her will a year previously. So when she passes away, that's when Jefferson Davis finds out he already owns the house he just bought. Well, these two closets, I use them as closets, but James Brown had a vent on the bottom and a vent on the top. So that redirected breeze would be forcing that cooler air into the house and to symbolize the maturity of man in mind and body as they grow. In the center, we honor the artist with a painter's palette. It takes Mueller two years to paint our home. It takes a husband and wife team 11 months to do the repairs after Katrina. Remember, we had 18 inches of water inside the house. They bring in a historian with a scalpel and a microscope. These are the authentic shades that were here when Jefferson Davis owned the home. Now Jefferson Davis takes it up to the Confederate White House in Richmond, Virginia. He has war plans spread out on it when he is notified that his five-year-old has fallen off a balcony and died. The harp is Miss Sarah Dorsey's. She challenges Miss Winnie to join his daughter to learn how to play it. Miss Winnie is up for the challenge. She can already play the piano, violin, and guitar. Now, y'all go in that room and look to the right of the Kanabi Casket piano is a portrait of Miss Sarah Dorsey, our major benefactor. 
As you look in the room, the windows, that lead pane glass and a three sash window setup that open up to over seven feet tall. Now, um, this was Miss uh, Sophronia's favorite piece of furniture. The sideboard weighs over 700 pounds, so when she loses the house, nobody will move it for her. Now, the back of your hand can tell temperature better than your palm. Lay the back of your hand on that Italian marble. What does it feel like? They would put their hors d'oeuvres on a silver tray. Do you know what hors d'oeuvres are? Do you know what kind of snack food you like at a party? What's your favorite snack food? Chex Mix, okay. They put their Chex Mix and their cheese squares and things like that on that silver platter to chill. Now down here, this is called a cellaret. Same Italian marble to chill the wine, champagne, and soda pop. There's a picture of Margaret and her husband, Joel Addison Hayes. The little baby doll in the chair is over 160 years old. It was Miss Margaret. The fireplace has a bone marble technique to it. It's actually all wood. And the portrait above it is my favorite portrait in the house. This is Jane Davis. Antiques. 
the center medallion, the plaster border mold, and the wainscoting, that's all James Brown. It's never been painted or treated. That one held her china. This one held her canned goods, like her pickles and her jellies. Now when Katrina hits, Katrina comes into the front door, she comes out this back door. From here over is secure, the bedrooms are safe. But there was a boardwalk on the front of the house that is driven underneath the house, damaging 30 of the 62 supporting columns, um, undermining the, the porch, and it collapses and gets washed out to the oyster bayou. And here preserved is the death mask of Jefferson Davis. You've probably also seen the one of uh, Napoleon, of Abraham Lincoln. And here is the carriage that uh, took Jefferson Davis's body. One of the things that I really hope is not lost as we debate still in society to this day, whether Confederates were veterans, uh, even today, whether they were racists or not. Jefferson Davis was a great 
American. He did a lot for America prior to the Confederacy. Uh, I, I don't think that's up for debate, but I highly encourage you, if you don't know a lot about the history of Jefferson Davis, to definitely look into the man. And you can see as we wind down the tour of the facilities here, there's, there's so much to see. You've got the home and the grounds, the cottages. You've got a lot of the uh, personal effects of Jefferson Davis. Many exhibits here and ending with the presidential library itself. Artifacts from when it served as a veteran's home, a hospital. Hard to believe the last Confederate widow just died mm -hmm. last year. Unbelievable. And so the last part is the library itself. The, of course, only presidential library for a Confederate president, as we only had the one Confederate president. Lots of people here doing research. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I gave you just a glimpse of what the tour is. I cut out a, a huge portion of the tour because we want you to come and uh, give them your patronage. A large part of what sustains places like these are donations and, of course, your tickets.